He's uh, the Hall of Famer, former Knicks broadcaster, Marv Albert, joining us on the program. Marv, how's life? Life is good, Dan. How, <laughs> how are you doing? <laughs> uh, I, I, I must say, retirement has, has been has been great. I, I do miss the preparation and, you know, the people I work with, and we do stay in touch, but uh, I am Mr. Binge TV, so, uh, and I do a lot of reading, work out, all those kind of things, but it, it, all is good. But I've been enjoying the playoffs also. Three years ago today, you announced your retirement. Was it to the day? I think, I think May 17th. I oh, think. wow. Okay. Yeah. Now, do you do any play-by-play, like around the house, a playground, <laughs> yeah. anything? Only, yeah, only uh, dinner time. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> how often, like the strangest way you've been recognized for your voice is, is how? Let's see, the strangest way? Well, I, I, it would usually happen on a phone if I'm uh, calling for some service or, you know, uh, that type of thing. And uh, I don't say my name, and they pick it off. You know, I'm always amazed by by that. Uh, but uh, you know, usually I, I'm not speaking the same way I would on a on a game. You know, so it's uh, that would be a little crazy if I were doing that. I was also wondering. Scotty Scheffler got arrested this morning uh, going into the PGA tournament, and. Uh, the strangest, like you were there when OJ, the uh, the white Bronco, the police chase, right? 94? I was doing the game. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, I was doing it, uh, going back and forth with uh, Tom Brokaw, who was following the uh, the car chase. And uh, and then uh, I would throw it to Bob Costas or to, uh, to Tom. It was one of the strangest events to cover with that, you know, with that going on. In fact, it was, uh, it, at first, we're looking across the way, and there were TV screens along the press table at Madison Square Garden, and you could see people coming down to stand behind the writers to watch what was what was going on. And uh, it, it was, and the players would come over, you know, and, and check it out during timeouts. So it was kind of a, a weird a weird scene. You know, O.J. Uh, was at one time doing uh, sideline for us for NFL games. Yeah. And I remember I was working with Paul McGuire at the time, and we would rehearse. And uh, Paul, all of Paul's comments during the rehearsal were used by O.J. when he would go on the <laughs> pregame show. So he just so, took he took Paul McGuire's uh, info. No, no, it was Paul's mostly. I must say the strategy. Uh, you know, we had met with the coaches and met with players, and and Paul would always have great stuff. And then what we had to do after a couple of games went by in this fashion, we were actually throwing the rehearsal. In other words, we made <laughs> things up. <laughs> Just to see if O.J. was going to use him? Yes, he did. A couple <laughs> things he did. Yes. But how difficult that's, that's was my, it? But that's my searing memory of, of uh, O.J., uh, you know, working with us at NBC. But how difficult was it? You're trying to – you're broadcasting an NBA Finals game. Meanwhile, you got this going on where Tom Brokaw on news, Bob Costas is involved in this. Yeah. And then now back to you, Marv. So just the rhythm of trying to keep that going. How difficult? It, yeah, it, it was most unusual. And, and Dick Ebersole, the president of NBC Sports, would, uh, was sitting to our left in the stands, but he had an earpiece, so he heard exactly what was going on. And he was kind of directing the activity, you know, also. Uh, sent it back to Tom, uh, go over to Bob, you know, all this kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, uh, by the way, there's Charles Smith with the jump <laughs> shot, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, really the most unusual situation I have been in uh, on the air. Talking to the Hall of Famer, Marv Albert, former Knicks broadcaster and the lead play-by-play voice, the NBA on NBC. Uh, I, I was also wondering with style now, how is play-by-play style, has it changed very much in your opinion? 
in terms of uh, basketball, no, very little, I would have to say. Uh, in other sports, perhaps there's more talking uh, than in the past. Uh, I, I watch a lot of baseball, and yeah, I find on TV there's is sometimes more talking than uh, than it had been in, in past years. But uh, I, I don't think in basketball it's changed very much. Well, I was wondering. I I love silence, like the use of silence in a building. Exactly. Yes. Uh, I agree. And and it feels like it, that's kind of a lost art that when somebody does it, like we feel like we got to go wall to wall when we talk, when we describe the action, when sometimes you just pause, that makes it even more exciting with, with what you're going to call next. Well, I totally, I totally agree with, with that. And, and you have to let, particularly on, on you know, radio is different because you're, t- you're describing every move that players make or whatever you know whatever's happening but uh on on tv you can certainly uh you have to learn to use the crowd and uh, you know there there are color commentators who you know really pull back which is great they come in at the right time you know that's why it was a a, you know a pleasure working with people like uh, steve kerr uh, Reggie, Reggie Miller. Uh, I, I don't want to leave people out. Uh, the Czar, of course, Mike Fratello. <laughs> uh, but uh, and, and there are some people uh, I won't name names who talk too much. There's no question. And uh, you can use the crowd. The crowd is very important, particularly at times like this during the playoffs, where the crowds are at another level. I mean, what takes place at the Garden now? I was at uh, I, I was at the Philadelphia Nick series and it was so loud and then people talk about when Brunson got hurt and came out in the second half after going back to the locker room they compared it to the Willis Reed return in uh, 1970 in the championship series against the Lakers where he was not supposed to play came out at the last minute and I happened be, I did that game on radio in New York and uh, that was the loudest crowd I've ever heard about at the square garden when Willis uh, came on the court, the Lakers couldn't believe it. I remember Chamberlain and West, the whole group, just stopped during the they were at the completion of their warm-ups, and they just turned and looked toward the area where Willis was walking out. And I, they were aghast. I mean, they couldn't believe he was playing. Then he comes out, of course, and hits the two jump shots, and uh, then. Clyde, Walt Frazier just took over and they beat the Lakers for the championship. Yeah. Clyde. But that was the loudest crowd I've ever heard. Uh, ever. You, anywhere. Um, what do you think when you, what do you see when you see the, this Knicks team? I, I see such a uh, scrappy, surprisingly excellent team that is hampered by injuries, and that's unfortunately. Eventually, going to you know we're going to see that's going to take its toll because without well they're missing Julius Randle, but they've been able to you know survive very well without him because Brunson, Hart, and uh, DiVincenzo have been terrific, and Ananobi, who is out again for tonight's game, is has been such a key, and uh, so has uh, Mitchell Robinson uh, in terms of rebounding. So they are so hampered, but they're so. Interesting, because despite all this, they've been able to play extremely well, particularly Brunson. Uh, he amazes me. I mean, the footwork, the shooting touch, so difficult to guard, uh, how far he's come from his days, not only at Villanova, but in Dallas, too. But he didn't get the playing time there. Uh, but I don't know how he made the quick recovery from the previous game. He couldn't elevate yeah. when he had that bad game. And uh, came out, and the last game, game five, was unbelievable, you know. But there are so many injuries now. I mean, even Jamal Murray's taking a lot of criticism, but he is hurt. I mean, that that's the re. I mean, Edwards did a good job on him, but and many Minnesota's a very good defensive team, but still, he's hurt. And the same is true of Tyrese Halliburton, who's hurt. You know, it happens. It's it becomes a different sport in the playoffs because uh, fouls and a lot of fouls that are called during the uh, regular season are not 
a not cold. It's a more bruising game. It's uh, you know it's played differently in the playoffs. And then you have these swings in terms of the scores, which <laughs> happened before. I mean, yeah. that's happened before. You know, one game the team wins by thirty, forty, fifty, uh, and then the next game it's like it never happened. I know. No. Well, it's great to uh, talk to you. Do you ever do you ever shout out yes? Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. But uh, you know, I'll be uh, sometimes walking. You know, uh, very innocently, and somebody will feel yes. You know, <laughs> scares me. <laughs> Pizza shows up, and you go yes, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, coffee yeah. for Marv, yes. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> that's good. You you ha- you do that very well. Dad. Thank you, thank you, Marv. Hey, great to talk to you. And Same here. Thanks, Always a thanks. pleasure. All right, that's uh, the great Marv Albert. Called twenty five All Star games, thirteen NBA Finals, eight Super Bowls, eight Stanley Cup Finals, uh, the Dream Team. Their run through the nineteen ninety two Olympics. So uh, he's been a busy, busy man. Uh, great to talk to him. Yeah, three years ago today announced his retirement. 